Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. As I turn to Isaiah, Isaiah 53, about all what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow, and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrow, yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of God, afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened, his, opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. He made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit found in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. And when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Isaiah 1. Isaiah chapter 1. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be white as wool. Isaiah 58, 1, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions, and the house of Jacob their sins. Matthew. Matthew. 
Matthew. Matthew chapter 7. Find a good spot to start. Matthew 7, verse 12. Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye into the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly there are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes among thorns, or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye should know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man but built his house upon sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall thereof. The Bible likens men to trees. A great subject at a farmer's market, fruit. The Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 7 spoke about good fruit and corrupt fruit. And if any of these vendors had corrupt fruit, you would not buy it. You would refuse it. And yet, in the eyes of God, if you are corrupt fruit, and the process of your fruit is corrupted, you will be rejected by God and sent into the fire. As I read in Matthew chapter 7. Those that are the good fruit. Well, I corrupt fruit on the ground here. The good fruit is those that are the Lord Jesus Christ. God sent His Son into the world to die for our sins. The chastisement, the beatings, the tragic result of man treating God, His Son, Jesus Christ, is foretold in Isaiah 53 that He died for our sins. He suffered for our iniquity. He took the wrath of God that should be our wrath. He already paid for our sins, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. And yet, if you choose to continue to decide to God that you will pay for your own sins, you will pay for your sins in a place called hell. He that hath the Son has eternal life. He that hath not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. These, my friends, are come from the Holy Scriptures of the King James Bible. I am not reading to you what men has wrote. I am reading to you what the Holy Spirit has inspired men to write through His Word. 
And his word says, What must I do to be saved? To believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Without the Lord Jesus Christ, you are inevitable, bruised, corrupt fruit. You are of no value to God without Jesus Christ. And what do you do with, with fruit that's bad? What do these people do at the end of the day when they see their inventory and it's bruised, it's broken, it's dyed, it's dried up? They throw it out. And what will God do to you when you appear before Him without Jesus Christ? You are bruised, you are dead, you are dried, He'll throw you out. But for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes Him shall not perish. You're looking at a majority of a product here at the farmer's market that will perish. It is perishable. It means you throw it out. If you don't consume it, it will become no good and needs to be trashed. And yet without Jesus Christ, that is the same thing God will do to your soul. He will take your perishable soul and he'll cast it out into the incinerator which will burn, but you'll never be incinerated totally. You will burn and you will burn and you will burn and that burning is a result because you choose to pay for your own sin when the Lamb of God paid for your sin. You come to God with religion, it will be rejected because religion is man-made. Religion is after the source of Satan, the deceiver, that comes to you dressed like a wolf and acting like as a true nature as a wolf to devour. You see, Satan likes fruit too. He wants you. He wants to devour you. He does not want you to become fruit and righteousness of God. He wants you to continue in your sin. He wants you to burn in hell with Him for eternity because He does not want to suffer alone. And some of you will come to God, Matthew chapter 7, you'll say, Lord, didn't I do this? Lord, didn't I eat Jesus? Lord, didn't I pray to Mary? Lord, didn't I do this? And he'll say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Your works, your merit does not please God and will never please God. The only work, the only merit a please of God is His Son, Jesus Christ. God in the flesh, Acts 20:28. 20, the blood of Jesus Christ is God's blood, and God's blood was shed upon that cross by Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is God. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. That's what God thinks of what you are in your own state. That's what God looks upon you when He sees you without the blood of Jesus Christ. You are not in righteousness. I have been saved since April 1987, and I am not in my righteousness. I am in the righteousness of His Son, Jesus Christ. And by the righteousness of Jesus Christ can you be right in the eyes of God. Can you enter into glory by the blood of the Lamb which take away the sin of the world? There is no way that you can come to God and say, hey, I'm better than Jesus Christ, and yet when you trust in your works, you trust in your religion, you are saying that you are better than the Son of God, which was sinless and holy. We're coming up on a time called Easter, a pagan Roman holiday. And yet with that is the Passover. The Passover, the lamb that was shed the night that Israel left Egypt. That lamb had to be the perfect lamb. That lamb is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was to be examined. And that lamb, that sacrifice, the lamb of God which take away the sin of the world, happened about 2,000 years ago. That lamb went to a mount called Calvary, and he died upon that cross. He gave 
up his life. The Bible says he went into hell and deposited man's sin. And he came out of the grave the third day, the third night. The gospel that lies that Jesus Christ died for our sins. The Lamb died according to the scriptures. And he was buried. They sealed him in a tomb. And then he came out of the grave. Three days and three nights he arose out of that grave victorious and rolled that stone away according to the scriptures. He has nothing to do with chocolate bunnies and eggs and jelly beans. He has to do with your eternal soul, the eternal sacrifice by God. For you to have life, for you to enter into glory with the Lord Jesus Christ by His sacrifice, by His love, by His care. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. See, we come here because the Bible says, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. If God says, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel, that means that you may not know what the gospel is. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be here to tell you what God expects, what God has done, because I know most of you will not be in a church tomorrow. And if any of you will be in a church, I know most of you will not be in a God-approved church. You will be in a religion. You'll probably be in, with the churches around here, you'll probably be in a church that doesn't even have the Bible, that calls itself the Bible. It's an artificial preservative book, and not the Bible. Ephesians chapter 2, we want to make sure you hear what God expects, what God wants of you. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of works. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. See, you're not going to go to heaven and say, look what I did. You can't go to heaven and say, God, look how well I am. Look how good I am. The Bible says there is none good. No, not one. None seeketh after God. And you cannot come to God by your works. Your works cannot save you. The finished work of Jesus Christ is what can save you. What can you do more than what Jesus Christ has already done for you? When God Almighty has come down and suffered and bled and died and rose from the grave victorious, what can you do to please God? When you stand before Him at the great white throne judgment, and he will listen to your way. Rome, I mean, Revelations 20. And notice I am turning to the Bible. Revelation 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them, that's who's deceiving you right now. That enemy of God, Satan, devil. Your father, John 8, 44. Your father was cast in a lake of fire and brimstone. Hail Satan! He's a loser, according to the Bible. Satan will end up in a lake of fire with brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. That's what happens when you go and fight against God. You burn in the lake of fire for all eternity. And you not only burn, but you be tormented. And I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it. From whose face the earth and heaven fled away. 
You will not be able to save Mother Earth when God shows up. Mother Earth takes off when Jehovah shows up. Fled away, and there was no, found no place for them. And I saw the dead. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I saw the dead. That would be you. If you have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, for the Bible says, For God so loved the world that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. And if you got eternal life by Jesus Christ, you're not going to be dead at the great white throne judgment. You're living. You're going to be recycled trash. You're going to jump from the incinerator into the incinerator, which incinerates forever. We'll take a flying jump in the lake, I think the expression is. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Well, I don't believe in God. That's too bad, because you're going to stand before God one day. And your jaw is going to drop. And you're going to wish you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean God, Jehovah of the Bible. You will stand before the God you do not believe in and have to give an account as a fool. For the Bible says the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And that's repeated twice in the book of Psalms. I saw the small dead and great stand before God and the books were open. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged on all things which were written in the books according to their works. Okay, here's works. Here are works. And they've been recorded in the Bible. That there are books about your life. God is writing a biography about you personally. And he's recording how many strawberries you just bought. He's recording everything that's going on. The Bible says he has all your hairs numbered. Even if they're artificial hairs, he has them numbered. The Bible says he knows about you. He has more loving care than the lilies and the, and the sparrows in the field. And he's writing a book about you. And he says, I see that religion. I see those charitable things that you do. And they're being recorded. And the sea gave up the dead, which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead, which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. There you are. You will be judged according to your works, but your works will come short of the finished work of Jesus Christ. See, you are not sinless. You still have the blood of Adam if you have never been born again, John 3, 3. You were conceived in sin by your parents. You need to be, you must be born again by the Spirit. Or you will one day be judged by your work. You will stand before God and have to give an account of your works. And let's see what happens with your works. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You know what your works will get? It'll get you the lake of fire. You know what the works of Jesus Christ get you? It gets you New Jerusalem. Your works are not good enough. Your religion is not good enough. There is none good, no, not one, for all 
have sin and come show the glory of God. The fact is that you're going to die. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. When you die, you die as a sinner. You can't get by. God says, be ye holy, for I am holy. You've got to have your sins taken care of, and the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. The Lamb of God which take away the sin. There's nothing else that will remove sin. You can't go to another man because another man is a sinner. You can't come to someone who, who else is a sinner to relieve you of your sins because they are sinners. And yet Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, is a Lamb without spot and precious. And God, Acts 20.28. 20, you see, when you go to Acts 20.28, 20, I'll read you Acts 20.28. 20, Take heed therefore to yourself to feed all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. To feed the church of God, church of God, which He has purchased with His own blood. God shed His blood. God purchased the church with His blood. And yet the one that died and shed His blood was Jesus Christ upon Calvary's mountain. So Jesus Christ shed His blood for the church, and God shed His blood for the church. That means that Jesus is God, and God is Jesus. Now, there's a big parable. Because there are a bunch of people that will come to your door who profess that Jesus is not God. In order for salvation, you've got to have God as Jesus and Jesus as God. You've got to have a Jesus that was virgin born. Some people in the Bible said that Mary had extra miracle affairs. That's not a biblical Jesus. And we are warned by Paul in Corinthians that there is another Jesus. There is another gospel. There is another spirit. Be not full. Because I said a prayer may not mean you're saved. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Verse 9. But thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, exactly what I'm doing right now, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Listen, just saying a prayer ain't going to get you saved. With the heart, you have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. I'm sorry to say, but there are people out there that say, Hey, say this prayer and you're okay. And that's a notch in their belt of salvation. You've got to have a heart condition. You've got to have the new birth by God the Son together. Upon the finished work of the gospel that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scripture. you got to make sure your rest upon Jesus Christ is founded in the Bible, the scripture. Verse 10, For the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believes on him should not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now let me just run over to Acts chapter 4 real quick here. Try to keep my place. Give me the wind that's blowing the pages. Trying to keep up. Acts 4.12 Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men 
whereby we must be saved. The name of Jesus Christ is the only payment, is the only name that God will accept for you to go to heaven. He will not take Mary. He will not take Buddha. He will not take Allah. He will only take the Lord Jesus Christ, His beloved Son, that will shed His blood for your soul. You can't come to God with your name. That don't fit. There's one name. There's one sacrifice. How then shall they call on him whom they have not heard believe? How shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? It is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But you find Daytona Beach Farmer's Market in 1016. But they have not all believed the gospel. Your rest is sure as I read Isaiah 53, he's despised and rejected of men. You people here in Daytona Beach, Florida today, you prove the Bible right to Christians. Your lack of interest, your uncaring thoughts of what God has done for you has already been prescribed in the Bible. As you walk the broad way into destruction, thinking you're okay, thinking everything's right, that preacher, he's full of it. That preacher doesn't know what he's talking about. He needs to be locked up. He needs to be put away. And yet, the feet of the gospel that come to you this afternoon, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel, is God approved. And one day you will stand before God ready to be perished and thrown out. While those who have believed on the Son and the finished work of Jesus Christ will go on to New Jerusalem as you go on to the lake of fire. Let me look at one more passage here. This one I always got to look in the index. I can never remember this one. Bear with me as Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. And the Bible says Luke 16, verse 22. The rich man also dies. You know, Americans are rich. Compared to any third world nation, America is rich. Even if you're in Daytona Beach and you're homeless, you are richer than families that are in India and Asian countries. We are a rich nation. And yet we don't thank God. But the rich man died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. And seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus rest in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. See, when you die without Christ, you'll wake up in hell. You will have your eyeballs. You will have your tongue, and you will want mercy, and you will not get it, and you'll be in torment instead of mercy. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Now notice this man in hell does not want alcohol. He wants H2O. He wants a little drop of H2O. And 
and he won't get it. He'll never get that relief upon his burning, tormented tongue, as you will never get any relief for rejecting Jesus Christ. This rich man is in hell paying for his sin. He never believed on Jesus Christ as his Savior. This rich man may be your story as you reject Jesus Christ. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy life receive, receiveth the good things, and likewise Lazarus the evil things. But now he's comforted. Lazarus who got right with God is comforted after death. There's comfort in the salvation of Jesus Christ. But now he's comforted, comforted and thou art tormented. There is no comfort rejecting Jesus Christ. Torment. You don't realize what you're saying when you tell someone to go to hell. We stand here that you may not go to hell. We don't want to see you suffer and burn. Then, verse 27. He said, I pray thee th therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Ladies and gentlemen, your family who has rejected Jesus Christ, who has died, that's burning in hell today, says, send that preacher to my family and preach the gospel that they may not come and join me. Don't think your friends are going to rejoice when you show up in hell. They're going to scream, and you're going to scream, send that preacher, God. And what's God's response? Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel. What is the gospel? That Jesus Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures. He was buried. And he arose again according to the scriptures. Now why was all that done? Because Jesus would enjoy, enjoy hanging out with the homeboys? Jesus would enjoy the brutal treatment that happened to him? That Jesus would enjoy dying on that cross? The most vulnerable and long-lasting death that could happen. Crucifixion. You died by your blood being poured out. You died by suffocation. You died in the embarrassment of all the people. You died by birds pricking at your skin. What did God do that all for? The thrill of it? He did it because of your lost soul. He did it that you might not perish, but that you have everlasting life. John the Baptist says, He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life from the dead stood before God. And the books are open, but shall see the wrath of God abiding upon him. The wrath of God is hell. And not only hell, but the lake of fire. You will come out of hell one day and enter into a flame that burneth forever as you take a jump in the lake. It's amazing how the expressions we use come out of the Bible and how ignorant this Christian nation is that they don't even realize what they say comes out of the Bible. And they're so quick to say, oh, the Bible's written by man. And by the way, in Luke 16, in this Bible, it's all red. You know what red means? That means Jesus spoke it. Jesus Christ gave a testimony of a man burning in hell. And wrote it down for you to read and learn. Jesus Christ has given us a warning. Don't go to hell.
That's a warning. Let's see, Matthew 5.22. Let's go to Matthew 5.22. I'll expose a lie. Matthew 5.22 as I try to turn there. Page is sticking. Must be the bird around here somewhere trying to prevent the gospel getting out. 5.22. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be danger of hell fire. Jesus never preached hell. Matthew 5, 21. You want me to read the other passages? Luke 16 was Jesus preaching about hell. The Jesus that does not preach hell is another Jesus. Matthew 5.29 If that right eye offend thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should And not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. That's Jesus speaking. Jesus said, hell, bad boy. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it off thee. For it is profitable to thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body be cast into hell. Jesus, stop it. Stop it, Jesus. Don't preach hell, Jesus. And notice what Jesus said. The body. Your body as that man that had a tongue and had a mouth to speak and had eyes to see Abraham. Your body after the great white throne judgment is cast into the lake of fire that burneth. Your body in hell will have limbs, it will have your senses, and they'll be tormented forever and ever without Jesus Christ. Matthew eleven twenty three. Matthew eleven twenty three. And thou, Capernaum, which are exalted into heaven, shall be brought down to hell. I thought Jesus never said anything about hell. And yet, I'm reading from the King James Bible. I am reading to you about a place that Jesus spoke of, that Jesus preached about, that Jesus warned us about, the very reason why Jesus came, that you might not in hell. That was 522. 529. No, not 529. Where are we? Oh, I'm in the wrong chair. Hold on. 1618. 1618. Matthew 16:18. They just stuck together today. I guess Second Corinthians four four is working. He does not want you people to know the truth. And I'm not speaking about Jesus. I can't even turn the page. I'm trying, hold on. I guess Satan doesn't want hell to be preached about. Okay. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And what shall a man give for exchange of his soul? You can lose your soul. That's called perishing. When you are put from the presence of God forever. You have inside you an eternal being, which is your soul. Your soul 
continues to go on even though your body has died. I'm trying to turn pages here again and I guess the winds of hell are stopping it. I can't turn them tonight. I guess somebody doesn't want hell to be preached about. It's amazing. Alright, 16, 18. Let's turn the page back here. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 18:9. If your preacher says that Jesus doesn't preach hell, I hope I got enough scripture for you to walk up to him and call him a liar. Matthew 18, 9. If thy eye offend thee, pluck it out, cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. I don't like that hell fire preaching, and you would not like Jesus preaching. And that pansy that's behind your pulpit would not be God approved. Because Jesus has said hell fire, and people say, oh, Jesus never preached about hell. How many places did I go to in Matthew that were written in red, and one place in Luke that all was written in red about the testimony of Jesus Christ and hell? The very fact that Jesus Christ came is that you might not go to hell. That if you were to believe on him, thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Listen, people, even Christians don't want me to preach hell. They get offended. And yet the Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news, that there is a way out of hell, and that is by Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, according to the Scripture, was buried, and arose again the third day, according to the Scripture. We, well, I sit here... With God's word being proclaimed by God to go and tell you what Jesus has done for you. The salvation message that Jesus saves and Jesus alone saves. And when you stand before God with your works and those books are open up, your works will cast you into the lake of fire which burns forever. And yet the righteousness of Jesus Christ will get you into New Jerusalem. Religion is man-made, but Jesus Christ is God-approved. And Satan don't approve of this, because I'm just mortified by all the distractions he's trying to do around me. He's dropping fruit. He's got the wind blowing the pages. He's got the car horns blowing. He's got you about trying to buy fruit and not listening to the Word of God. And but one day, whether you believe Jesus or not, by the words we preach, by the signs we hold, by the gospel tracts we will give you free, one day you're going to thank me for giving you the word, even if you rejected that word. Because you have known that the truth has been preached to you. You're going to know that in love we have come to you. You're going to know that God has given me an amplified voice for you all to hear the word. I know my voice is annoying. I don't like to listen to it either. Ask my wife. I don't listen to my messages. I hate my voice. And yet God has given me a loud voice for you all to hear that Jesus saves. And I'm using amplification because I don't want to blow my voice. I don't want to ruin my voice. 
So I can continue to preach Jesus without harshness, without ruining my vocal cords. That you might hear that Jesus saves and Jesus alone saves. The message that we preach to you is an eternal life long, even longer than life that Jesus saves. And you are a sinner because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Because you die is to prove you are a sinner. But Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. God didn't come down from heaven to hang out with the, with the, the humans. Saw you will burn in hell without him. God sees you guilty and provided a lamb of sacrifice to take away your sin. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Don't let God ever throw you out. Don't let God ever tell you to go jump into the lake. Don't let God ever tell you to go to hell. Don't let God ever say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. And how do I do that, preacher? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ with thy heart, and believe with thy mouth with confession on Jesus Christ, the Savior.